Welcome everybody to RDA Tech Q and A. Yeah, I know we took a week off because I was at Con Bravo, but I'm back. We are this RDA Tech Q and A. You have questions, we have guesses. Uh, with me as always, my producer Mike Gearman. He long storied history in tech. I myself, Mike Nash. I normally run RDA. I have a long and storied history in technology. We are answering your questions. If you have something you think we might be able to help you with. Send that to requests at radiodeadair.com. Maybe we can help. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, the, re the reason I looked puzzled there for a second is because I was trying to figure out which tab it started auto-playing sound. I hate when they do that. That is that is the, the devil. Well, and especially since it did it hadn't started. Come on, come on, come on, pause, damn it. Pause, stop. Um, it hadn't started when I loaded the page like five minutes ago. It'd been sitting there cycling, going, ah, I can't load the video yet. I can't load. Oh, here. Now he's got to figure out where it's coming from. Yes. That'll surely make us buy your products, advertisers, frustrating the shit out of us. It was actually a news story for the article. I know. And yet they, they do the autoplay shit. I'm like, I'm already here. If I wanted to watch a video, I would. I'm here to read the story. You silly shits. That's yeah, really, of course, aggravating when you're going, I need to look at five stories at once and then head back and forth. Oh, they're all playing auto-playing videos. And I've got five different streams going at once. They're trying to talk over each other. It's like they can hear each other and they're screaming. It's like they're, they're, it's five tabs and they all think they're Fox News correspondents. Hold on one second. I'm going to scooch over here and twitch up the overall output just a wee bit. Ow. 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 I think if you're making that kind of sound, you, you're doing it wrong. All right, that that is that a little bit better. That that sounds sounds okay to me, but you know I'm listening to just the Skype side of it. So okay, that that looks a little better to me. Fuck, we'll do it live. Oh whoa, wait, that's way too loud. That was that was peaking. God <laughs> damn it. That's why I shouldn't mess with that that, that doll. I have so Not much audio. Everybody. I have so much audio equipment. Yes, we are live. All right. Well, so we're gonna look back on a little bit of the tech news while I've been away. Yeah. And Jesus Christ, fucking again. Well, that could be any of the stories. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, this one is definitely one of the again sort of things. Um, those of you just joining us for the first time ever. Let's just, I'm going to abbreviate this one a little bit. Bitcoin is a bad fucking idea. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's it, the idea of a digital currency is, is neat in theory, in practice. It probably is still neat. It's that the people who manage it, run it at various Bitcoin exchanges need to get their security shit together better. I was I was I wasn't sure if that was gonna be a real sneeze or it was gonna turn into a bullshit. No, that was actually a real sneeze. I've learned how to gone, it could have gone either way. Am I gonna do like a series of sneeze? I hate that. I hate when you sneeze or you'll sneeze. You sneeze and you just keeps going. All right. Um. So last year, four was it four hundred and fifty? Was it last year, two thousand fourteen? I'm trying to remember what it was. Four hundred and fifty million bitcoins were stolen from Mount Gox. In Japan. Yeah, million dollars worth of Bitcoins. Million, yeah, million dollars worth of. Not million Bitcoins, million dollars worth. I don't believe there's worth. that many Bitcoins. Yeah. $450 million dollars worth of Bitcoins were stolen from Mt. Gox. Yes. And after that, they said, well, all we have to do is improve our security, push all the right buttons, and that'll never happen again. Uh-huh. Guess what? Well, well, well. Technically, they're, they're they're correct because it didn't happen again, because this was only a six hundred sixty-eight million dollar Bitcoin hack. But it did happen again. Yes. Oh, so Bitfinex is a uh, Bitcoin exchange in Hong Kong. Wasn't Mt. Gox based in Hong Kong? Japan? Well? No, Tokyo. They, they Tokyo. Tokyo. Yeah. Um. What Bitfinex did different was they said, well, we're going to have this multi-signature security setup 
wear that. Every we're gonna have a key, and you're gonna have a key, and we're gonna have another key. And without two of those three keys, you can't access the accounts. Okay, I can see where that seems like it's relatively secure. Guess what happened? Well, okay, either someone stole their key, or no. their key system was not terribly robust. Yes. Yes. Uh, our key, yes, we have our key here. It's five. Yeah, they, 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 they uh, were hacked. They put together this key system, which was supposed to instill confidence in the Bitcoin. I wouldn't say it's in a market. I don't know what the fuck it is. It's an exchange. It was supposed to instill confidence, and it's had the opposite effect. Since this hack, Bitcoin lost one-fifth of its, of its value. If you were invested well, well, in... Te technically, that means the, the $68 million they stole is now worth one-fifth less as well. <laughs> if you were invested in Bitcoin, even if you were did not have your Bitcoin stolen, Suddenly, that day, they were worth one-fifth less. Well, you know, that's not that much different from being, say, invested in the stock market. And you're invested in some chemical firm and they have a disaster in, I don't know, India. And, you know, kill thousands of people and suddenly your stock is worth. But no one died here, so that's at least a good side to this. Yeah, but in this case, it's, it's so volatile. It's so volatile that one inch... And this isn't like in one area of a multi-diversified market. This is it. This is the whole shebang. There's no diversification when it comes to Bitcoin. There's no other, that's it. Well, oh, there was Kanye coin, but he shut that down. There, there's no diversification there. So one fifth, just gone. Just this the fuck appeared. That's already it's, bad. It looks enough. like it's back up a little bit, but. That's already bad enough. Yeah. But here's even the better the better part of this. Okay. Let's say your your bank was robbed. Right. And it's an FDIC uh sanctioned bank. What happens to your money? Well, yeah. Okay, well, so technically a bank robbery <clears throat> shouldn't affect my FDIC account at all. It should be if the bank collapses that the FDIC stuff kicks in. Right. And whatever their I think there's multiple levels to FDIC. I'm not really sure. I've never had enough money to reach that limit. There is a limit for FDIC insurance per account. And, but if you have less than that limit, the federal government pays you back because okay. all the banks pay into FDIC. And if you're over that limit, they pay you back to the limit and you're out whatever else it is. Well, guess what happens with, with this Bitcoin exchange? Well, of course, the same thing happens with the stock market crash. You don't get anything. No, it's even worse. This is even worse than that. To cover their loss, what they're saying is they're going to be extracting Bitcoins from other people's accounts to cover the loss. They are going to socialize the loss. Okay, so this, let me see if I get this correct. Mm -hmm. We had, say, one dude. Let's call him Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob had all the Bitcoins that were stolen. Right. You and I had Bitcoins on the account on this exchange as well, this right. part of the exchange as well. Bob loses all his Bitcoins, but they say, okay, well, Nash, Mike, we're going to take some of your Bitcoins and give them to Bob to make up for his loss. Yes. Uh, I would give them the finger and say, no, the fuck you're not either. But I don't know if the, what, what the deal is. What Not ever having done, I considered Bitcoin mining at one point, but I never had a, when it was a, a thing to do to jump into, I never had a computer powerful enough to do it until well after the rush. Um, so I don't know what the rules are, you know, guideline. If, they, if there's something in agreement they signed, that, that's do it, allowable. This is the official statement. We are leaning toward a socialized loss scenario among Bitcoin balances and active loans to BTC USD positions. The exchange wrote in a blog post Friday, Bitfinex is still, quote, settling positions and balances and will provide more details soon. I see there's another quote down here by one of the people who lends money on it. It means that our rights as lenders might not be protected. Yeah. Okay, so that's definitely leaning in towards giving the finger to these guys and possibly suing them. This is one of the crucial problems with Bitcoin. 
in any other currency, nationally backed currency, there are typically balances and provisions in place to deal with these sorts of occurrences. Bitcoin, there is no regulation. None. So it's like Russian money. Yes. Like, no, it's, it's, it's it, it, with US backed dollars, there are laws about how to oh, deal yeah, with absolutely. these sort of things. Wow. Yeah. With, with banks that hold your money, an exchange, even money exchanges, there are laws for how they have to deal with this. If a, if a money exchange, if a currency exchange was robbed, the currency exchange probably in no way could they legally say, okay, we're taking everybody else's money and putting it into a pool and, and covering our losses that way. Sound good? They couldn't do that. Yeah, no, I don't think they could. The danger of Bitcoin is there is no oversight. They can do this shit and you have no rights because there's no regulations. There's no backing of the law to say, fuck you. And this has, this has sort of shaken the market's faith. While it has regained some of its price, this was supposed to prove that Bitcoin was safe now. How'd yeah, that work so out much. for you? Yeah, it's not not so much with the safe. It didn't work out very well. You you did you did bad. You did bad and you should feel bad. I'm not seeing though exactly no no real details on what the hack was though. I don't know if they've released all the details on that, but just the very fact that this was this is super safe. This is yeah. not though the, the the company that said they provide the, the, the security for it said they, they haven't found any evidence of compromise on their servers. Um so, who knows? Maybe man in the middle attacks got the, got the uh, the keys as they're being transmitted over time. Well, going to move on to some other news. BlackBerry okay. used to be king of the sh the heap. They they were king shit. Yep. Um. Everyone and, and then they lost their shit. Yeah. <laughs> everyone and anyone used Blackberries in the early aughts, late nineties, early aughts for a while well, until if the you, if, if you were a business person, I I don't I don't know any normal people like you or I walking around with a Blackberry. It was all in the business world, you know, work. I have a work Blackberry and my phone. When when the iPhone hit. Black, oh, yeah, tanked hard. BlackBerry started taking some damage when Android hit, which was cheap, easy, everywhere. That's when BlackBerry really caught the shit. Now, the company is in very bad shape. They're yeah, not. Yeah. They've already announced they're going to stop making their traditional BlackBerry uh, phones, which has already probably sent a ton of IT administrators into a, a, spit, a dizzying spin yeah, a well, we, frenzy we switched off of those over a year ago so yeah but there are a lot of places government contractors local businesses oh like no the government's pretty much switched to these things iphones yeah iphones yep <laughs> oh that is such a bad idea with a mandatory otter box Oh, that is precious. That is such a bad idea. Whose brilliant idea was that? Because that's such a bad idea. And I don't know if the government as a whole has, but my part of the government has. That is such a bad idea. Well, we're not getting the latest and greatest, so they're relatively cheap. It's not a matter of how much you spend on them. It's Apple's support. It's terrible. Oh, yeah, we're not relying on Apple's support. No, I mean, in the, they, they they will some just all of a sudden, we're not supporting these products anymore, ever. No more updates. You're on your own. Have fun. Yeah, our, our contract isn't through them. It doesn't matter. All software comes down from Apple. All stuff comes down from Apple. If Apple ain't providing it, no one can provide it. Third <laughs> ways. Oh, well, anyway. BlackBerry had some options at this point. Either perhaps go... Make, hmm? they, could, they could make a phone that was worth a shit. Mm. 
They are starting to move more toward Android, but of course, since they they waited so long, they're a little bit back in the field. Yeah. They've, they've got to find a good niche there. They're not content niche. with... Yeah. Niche. They're not content with belt tightening. They're not content with with cutting back and downscaling. No, no. They have a new business model they're exploring. Patent Sue trolling. Everybody. Patent trolling. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Blackberry is now moving on to lawsuits. Um... BlackBerry, its main competitors, they also everyone has these patent portfolios. Yes. Um, uh, and the way it works is you, you know, stuff you've made, you patent. Stuff you've bought from other people has patents. And often in the big boys, you know, like Google and Apple, Microsoft, Microsoft and Apple and Samsung and etc. There's a certain level of detente, not always, but a certain level of we have these we could use against you, but we're not going to as long as you don't use yours against us. But now that BlackBerry has less skin in the game and they're moving toward a desperation point, yeah, that mutually assured destruction doesn't bother them quite so much anymore. So what they're doing is they are using older patents they had acquired and built up over the years both by inventing them, some, buying them a lot, and compiling them together. And now they're going after other manufacturers of stuff, phones, everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And of course, it is being filed in the Northern East District of Texas. Texas. Yes. Oh, Texas. Texas has a whorehouse in it. Um. See, this is. This is not new. Patent trolling is definitely not new a new problem, at least in the United States. Well, but technically, I don't think they fit the definition of a patent troll yet because they actually have had products. Most patent trolls don't produce stuff. They just sue over it. Yeah, but that's what's making this stand out. That's what's making this a little bit different. This is the first time we have a company that has built up as much as BlackBerry, who actually made real, actual things, shifting their gears and taking all those patents. They're not making quite those things anymore. They're not making BlackBerry phones anymore. Those, there's a stop. They're not making yeah. them anymore. So instead of making the thing, they're just using the patents they earned to inflict them on other people even though they will not be making that thing no more. Yeah. Well, they, That's they, patent in troll. Theory, in, in, in theory, given their previous press statements, they will be making things again, but they're going to use this as the money to make their things. Whether they follow through with that, we have to wait and see. Can if they don't, that's when, they, that's when I will call them a patent troll. I really don't foresee BlackBerry coming back. I don't. What 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 else can they make in this market? What can they build that would take away from the ease and ubiquity of Android or the market dominance of Apple? They could have their own branded Android phone. They're doing that, but that's not good enough. And you know, if they if they put some features on there uh, in their own models that are you know business likes. Then they'll have their niche, their niche back. Yeah, features, but features don't do it with smartphones anymore. They, they, that's what they've been doing for the past five years easily, is adding features and features. And have you seen the new uh, wave of Android phones that are desperately trying to capture market? The little snap-on attachments they're making. It's so desperate. It's like, oh, you could snap on better speakers, or you could snap on this little shitty projector. That, that actually, I think that started in a, a British phone company where they sold, basically it was a very base model phone that snapped on things like, oh, you want a big key keypad because you're older and you, you can't push these little tiny buttons. Or, you know, and it was just add-ons where it's like, design your own phone, effectively. Go in, base model, this add-on, this add-on. You don't need a camera, don't put on a camera. 
Yeah, but that's you not know. working. And the, that that has people the the results, especially this year's models. I've been reading some of the reviews on those. They're less than stellar. What is BlackBerry going to bring to the market? That would be a compelling reason to switch to their product. The only thing I can think of is it's there'll be some, and it won't be enough, but there'll be some business people who go, I like having the name BlackBerry in my pocket. I'm used to that. I want that. There'll be a handful. So no old white people. Yeah, old white people. <laughs> that no is big. a key demographic for them to chase. You get after them old white people. You get after them. That, that is where the money is, old white people. There's comments I could make, but you, you'd have to cut it out of the show. <laughs> uh, last on our stories this week. Um, it would, you know, it wouldn't quite be this show if Comcast hadn't done something shitty. Quite true, quite true. And what has Comcast fucked up this week? Well, Comcast was offering a uh, service protection plan. To customers for an additional five dollars a month, which doesn't really sound like a lot, no, until you multiply it, of course, by twelve for a year, and then by Comcast's user base, or at least the user base that signs up for it. At which point you're getting into real money. They they offered these these protection plans, five dollars a month. It will cover. Call charges that require repairs to cable TV, high-speed internet, or telephone wiring inside your home. There's the rub. Because what it didn't cover was any of the wires inside, inside your home. Yeah. Uh, and, and the, the of course, the other part of this, instead of, you know, it, it covered, you know, from the, effectively, from the street to your house. Mm-hmm. From the wall socket to their equipment, right? But not from your street. That's you know, in the in, in the walls, what it didn't cover. Didn't cover anything inside any of the wiring that was inside the walls. Not covered. But here's the other part of this: anything that was basically from the street to your house was supposed to be covered by them automatically. Yes. Without this plan and free, and so they would often charge for it anyway because the technician would punch in the wrong code. So we have a, a six of one, half a dozen of the other possibility here. Comcast is evil, okay, or they're incompetent. And I think it's a combination of both. They're Why not both? And incompetent. All right, let, let, let's just break this down a little bit for everybody at home. What this service protection plan supposedly covered was outside work from the pole to your house, which was supposed to be already covered by law anyway. So did not fall under a prote protection plan? No, they, they were already supposed to take care of any cost for that. Or from that little socket you screwed into the wall to your TV, which all they would do is come out and plug in a new wire, yeah, which you could buy yourself online for less than $5 on Amazon, and you wouldn't have to keep paying that $5 every month forever. Yeah. What it didn't cover was the shit they needed it to cover, which is any of the the cables, what they call wall-fished cables. Yes. When they run they run them inside between the, the, the wall, in between the drywall stuff. Between, that, the, between Through the studs and things like that, yes. That stuff's not covered. Although the script, and again, I'm quoting from Comcast's own script, covers repairs to cable TV, high-speed internet, or telephone wiring inside your home. Now, for most people, when you say inside your home, you think inside the home. Does not exclude inside the walls. Because right. the walls are part of the home. Kind of, you know, just having a roof is not a home, that's a pavilion. Yes. Or, or maybe a gazebo. A gazebo. Let's not start the gazebo shit. We have D&D &D geeks here. Um, so, I'm, I'm going to read from the lawsuit. There's been a lawsuit in Washington State over this. 
If a technician fixes a broken Comcast cable box, but also provides uh, customer education during the service call, the customer will be charged for the service call if the technician applies the customer education code because customer education fix codes are chargeable. Yes. So if, if say, they, they come in, they go, oh, the problem is the wire from the, 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 the wall jack to the TV. And they go, we're, we're just going to replace this wire. It's the easiest thing to do. Hmm. And they say, don't, don't run your vacuum cleaner over the wire like that again. Suddenly, that's customer education. And suddenly, it's not covered by the service plan. Yeah. You fucks! And uh, as we said, uh, Washington State is suing them. And if Washington State is successful, which it may very well be, uh, I would expect other states to jump in. Mm -hmm. The... the I, I would see New York jumping in. Oh, God, yes. Uh, because the New York attorney generals love lawsuits against big corporations. And yeah. the big reason they love lawsuits big, against big corporations is because New York attorney gen state attorney generals, every single one of them from the dawn of time to now, has their eye on a bigger prize than New York state attorney general. Yep. And winning a big case. Especially gets against. Them that close, much closer to against, governor. Especially against Comcast. Who everyone oh, yeah. hates. The only, the only, I mean, the only, only case I could think of that would get them more love in New York City, excuse me, in New York, would be suing New Jersey. <laughs> now, now listen to this. Th this, all right. So this five dollars a month was supposed to cover the cost of any service call. It was protection, except yeah. service calls typically run from anywhere from thirty six fifty to seventy dollars each. Which, so it sounds like a good deal. If you only had, you know, $60 a year, if you only had one service call, you know, maybe you broke even, maybe you didn't. If you had two, you probably broke even. But the problem was, the way they had things run, nothing was covered by a service call. And or, very, or very little. And you had to pay for the protection plan on top of it. So you were paying twice. You were paying for a protection plan that didn't protect against anything. And the yeah. service call, you would have had to pay for anyway. Unless it was, of course, their equipment outside the house, which they're supposed to be free. But again, I'm, I'm re the way I read this, it looks like they charged for a few of those, too. Yeah, they're not supposed to. But they did anyway. Fuck, I've dealt with that before. I've dealt with, with Comcast. When I moved into this place, I, I was charged for shit that I shouldn't have been charged for. They're horrible. I hate them. If I had any other fucking option... I would take it because they are the fucking devil. And I hope they lose all the money on this one. So yeah. if you currently are a Comcast subscriber and you see on, you were talked into one of these service protection plans, if it shows up on your bill, call them about it. Yeah. Get it taken off because it isn't saving you. You are just basically paying $5 to Comcast for nothing. And I just looked, there's another, another little bit actually. Comcast's definition of inside wiring actually includes some outside wiring. Their indefinition of inside wiring starts 12 inches outside your house. Yep. Okay, a foot, that, you know. Maybe, I guess the theory is, if it's within a foot of the house, maybe it's something you did, digging some, digging some, planting some rose bushes or something, I don't know. So yeah, if you have one of these service protection plans on your bill, get it taken off. Do it immediately. They're fucking gouging you. They are lying. They are lying, lying fucks. Yeah, Fuck they Comcast. may... Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Uh, customers paid $41.6 million for service plans that helped them avoid only about $5 million in service charges. That's $36 million profit. You guarantee you someone in a with a, a C in front of their name or another high-level manager, assistant vice, you know, uh, got a big bonus off of bringing that much extra money in. For nothing. Fuck these... Penises! And they, using, and they were using the script up until last month. Get that fucking service plan off your off your your bill. Get it off there. Get I, it I will off. say, my, my, my favorite line of the article, though, is... The AG's office told Ars, Ars Technica, which we're reading the story from, that it obtained the script in the course of our investigations, but declined to be more specific. 
that tells me they found a disgruntled Comcast employee who said, no, no here's what they have us say. <laughs> this is, yeah, you, you gotta treat you. Fuck em. <laughs> if you're gonna be an evil corporation, you gotta treat your, your, your employees well or they will turn on your ass. All right, well, that's our news for this week. Let's look into some of these questions. And we got a bunch of questions. And as usual, you have questions, we have guesses. Yep. Uh, if you have ones you might want Mike and myself to answer, go ahead and send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. Maybe we can help you. Uh, I want to start with Vortex question here because this, this is one of those little old wives' tales that okay. drives me nuts. And, and and a lot of tech people tell tell customers this, and they shouldn't. So let, let's talk about this. Okay. Um, she writes, hello, Mike, Nash, and cute, adorable Grady. Hello, Grady. You want to be on the... You, you, he does, he's, he's, he's sleeping. Um, I have two questions. My first question is, I have a Samsung Galaxy S5. Active phone for a few years now, and my phone's battery has swelled twice now. This is the second time I've had to replace it. I've also been told it's because I always have my phone plugged in over charging it, which I think is bull. Can that yeah, be the it, problem, or could it be from dropping it a few times? The phone has been a bit water that has been recently. It, it's from dropping it a few times, uh, probably. And uh, the, the batteries have a finite number of, of charges and recharges. Right. And as they get closer to that... Uh, cycle of charge and recharge, they tend to, to swell. And most batteries do this. You find this in, in pretty much every kind of battery out there. But um, I want to, the, the part that, that, that pissed me off, especially when technicians say this. Okay. Any phone you've purchased in the last 10 years, there is no such thing as overcharging. Maybe even further back than that, but I'm going to be on the safe side and say in the last 10 years. There's no such thing as overcharging your phone. Not your because phone. A, yeah, not your phone. Not any, not anything that basically uses a modern battery charging system. Right. Because they have little circuits built into them that go, hey, this thing's charged. Turn off the juice. Yeah, and not, not just laptops, phones, uh, tablets, anything that uses a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, any charger, any device that was built within the... Some of them have circuits. Some of them have computers built into it. Just to say, we're going to regulate how the charging's done so we're not... Some of them, really, the nice ones, will figure out how to do it in such a way so it, it doesn't erode your battery quite as much. Yeah. Um, there was a little quick seg, something we're going to talk about in a little while, in a couple weeks. There was actually a hacking case where people were hacking into the little computers and the laptop batteries to extract information See, uh, yeah, that's that's messed up. Is yeah. that a DEF CON? Uh, I don't know where I saw that. I think it was Ars Technica this week, but I saw it very recently. Hmm. Well, um, all right. In, in this case, I think what more more likely what's happened with your phone is, yes, you may have damaged it when you dropped it. Um, that may have altered or or tricked the charging circuit into thinking that the battery wasn't charged or damaged it or damaged it and it was sending more power to the battery. but the, the over that whole the, the if the phone is doing this a technician's first instinct should not be to say oh well that just happens no it doesn't that you're a bad technician yeah it, it may happen to one phone out of a hundred thousand or something like that but the that's it, it. It's not so okay. Let me correct that. It may happen to one phone in a given model in 100,000, but it could be someone has built a crap model of a phone that has a bad circuit just by design, and they may or may not do a recall. I don't know if that's your phone model or not. Not, not the Galaxy S5, not the okay. Galaxy S5. Come on, this is Samsung. Um, to, to me, it's more likely that it's, it's the drops, maybe it's other environmental conditions the phone is exposed to, right? Um. Say you leave the phone on your on the dashboard of your car, or dash of your car regularly, and it, it gets hit with a lot of sun. You know, it's heating up. Especially, you mentioned your phone is heating up a lot. A lot of programs uh, tax the phone as well. If you've got Pokemon Go on there, your phone is going to heat up more. If you've got the new Final Fantasy game on there, your phone is going to heat up more. 
Uh, there Now, I don't know about this next one I'm going to say. A according to the uh, crime drama shows, when your phone has spyware on it, it's going to heat up more. Well, I'm not sure. That, that seems to me like the poorly written spyware. Yeah. But, it, um, but in, in this in this case, your tech that's a bad technician. Any technician who tries to shift that kind of thing off onto some random nebulous shit, they're not doing their job. Their job at that point should be to repair or replace. They shouldn't just sell you a new battery and send you out because in this instance, that's dangerous. Yeah. If a battery has swelled up once, that's a repair or replace. That's not just, oh, here's a new battery. No. That could potentially, a swelled battery can potentially get to the point where it explodes and batteries have dangerous chemicals inside of them that can hurt people. Yep. You don't just send that back out and say, have a nice day. You repair or replace. That's a bad technician. If any technician tries to do that to you, go to another technician. Get a second opinion on that shit because that's, that's dangerous. So, yeah, you got bullshit. Your phone... On the on the, the the bad side of it, your your phone is probably fucked. You need to get it repaired or replaced. Yeah, but they shouldn't well, you have know, sent you and, off. And the, the, and, and the and the Galaxy Note Seven just came out, so Galaxy Note Fives are going to get real cheap real fast here. So they shouldn't have sent you out with just a new battery. That was dangerous. Uh, she had a second question. My question is not really tech related, but I was interested in picking up the guitar and wanted your suggestions for a starter acoustic guitar. I'm, I this is I get a lot of people asking me what's what's a good guitar I should start with. Um, when it comes to acoustics, go to a store. Yeah. Don't don't order it online. Go to a store, ask to see their student models, and actually have it in your hands. Yeah, and a, and a, and a starter acoustic's not going to run you all that much. Two hundred at most. At most. At most. And you can probably get them for less than, significantly yeah. less than that. Sometimes they have uh, open boxes. Sometimes they have used ones. Yeah. But, I mean, I'd, I'd go to a guitar center, check out the starter acoustics, see what they got. Sometimes they have kits, which the, the guitar is a little bit lower quality, yeah. but they give you a bunch of extras. And you might look at that. You know, if, it's, yeah. if, you, if you're going, you know, I don't know if I want to keep up with this, but I'll spend $100 on this. Hey. Yeah. And you can always turn it into a, a present for a, a cousin, guitar, a cousin or something. Guitar Center is not always the best value, but what they do offer is a chance to sit in the place with the product in your hand, which when it comes to guitars, is kind of vital. It's all yes. about how they, it's not one of those things like, you know, if you buy a video card, they're probably pretty much all the same if it's that make and model. Two GTX 1070s from the same manufacturer are going to be identical. Two Fender guitars are not necessarily going to be identical. Because you might run into, this one was made in Japan, this one was made in the U.S., there's significant you know, style, neck differences. Because you, you know, you're going to want to be doing a lot of things where you're going, okay, this, this doesn't feel right in my hand. I need yeah. a smaller neck or a larger neck or, you know, your best different bet, shape. Your best bet is go to a guitar center, try them out, and don't spend... I'm saying if you want to spend more, about 200, that should be your upper limit for a starter guitar. 100 is a reasonable limit. 200, that's pushing it, but that's only if you really want to. That's that's your price range, that, and that's your best way. And, of, and they might have a good deal going on too. Um, and, and guitar center is also relatively knowledgeable, unless you get the new guy. There's almost always a new guy. There's always a new guy. Uh, let's let's go to Russell's question because we have a follow up from Russell. Uh, remember okay. a while back he had a problem with his dongle? Uh, his, yes. Last his time, dongle. his dongle. Russell had a problem with his dongle. Dongle. <laughs> Russell was having some problems with his system. He was using a 3G dongle to uh, get his internet on his laptop, and it was causing a weird memory error at the end. We oh, had this is a laptop. Right. We advised him to try MemCheck and then yeah. check out all his different USB uh, and try moving stuff to different USB ports. Well, here's what he came back with. Um, bad news is I may have found the source of those errors when setting up said MemCheck. Uh, namely, two of my USB ports are on the fritz. Fortunately, they're the only that the only two that are faulty, but that means uh, I now only have one available port I can access easily. And guess which one my 3G dongle uses. 
Well, Russell, um, it's not a perfect solution, but it is. Here's, here's a problem that happens with laptops a lot because everything is integrated into the motherboard. And this sure. does happen with desktops too, at least with ports. Everything is a part of that motherboard. And if you want to fix it, you have to replace the entire motherboard, which is yeah. more or less replacing 90% of the computer. What I'd recommend instead is, okay, part of it will depend on your, your model of laptop. I don't remember if you told us what it was last time or not. Yes, yeah. not here. Uh, some laptops have factory available docking stations. You can put down port replicator, give you extra ports. Others have things you can, okay, my model doesn't have that natively, but here's a port replicator, port adder that I can plug into various parts in here and get more things. And so if you need more USB, I would look at that. But in this case, some, home use at least. sometimes USB ports can go bad. They short yeah. out and they, but they don't take the entire computer with them. So you still have a functioning computer. Just some of the ports don't work. Another option here, which again, this is not your best option, but it's the one that'll get you by. Get a USB hub. Yeah, that too. It's I mean, the, the port replicator is more, if you, more for yeah. if you need extra video outs, things like that. Uh, and whereas the hub is just, I need more, I have, I need more USB than I have. Yeah. Something got, like that. I got this cheap little thing on Amazon. I think it ran me $10 and it's, it's a USB 3.0 hub. It has four extra USB ports and it also has the option to be powered. There's a little plug-in you can add power to it too yes. as well. And that's, that's where I would recommend with the USB hub because powered one, yeah. um, or at least power option. Uh, because a lot of devices, will, yeah, I just need USB power, like your mouse will yeah. work just fine. Uh, but other devices might need an extra little bit of a... Like if you're charging your phone off of it. Yeah. That could use a little bit of... So yeah, that... that you. Uh... And, and the other thing I would check, just because the data part of a USB port is gone, doesn't mean the power part of That's, it is gone. Yeah. So your port that's no good for your your... 3G dongle might still be able to charge your phone. You can try it, plug your phone into it, and see if it'll it'll get power to it. That's so at least it, it wouldn't be a total loss. Um, let's go to all right. Let, let's get to an annoying one. Let's get an annoying one out of the way. Okay. Uh, Stephen's question. Uh, this is another one of those uh, questions. All right. Steven writes, I recently did a repair install of Windows 7 since I didn't want to reinstall everything I have set up on my computer. This was done due to Windows corruption. I couldn't get repaired. Since then, things have been fine, except a few updates state when they install that they search for updates and they show up again. I tried running. Okay, so he's, it says I installed this update. Great. Check Windows update. Oh, there it is again. I tried running Windows Update Troubleshooter and immediately get an error problem preventing the troubleshooter from starting. Tried Googling the error code, haven't had much luck finding any. Tried other troubleshooters, see if they have the same issue I do. I made sure the troubleshooters are running. Is administrator, have you idea what could be causing this? And what I could do to fix it without potentially doing a full restore? Okay, so I don't really know the, the, the solution to the troubleshooter won't start other than right. possibly there's a service that's not running. Or you, I know there's an option to turn off troubleshooting in the computer and I, the reason I know this is because government computers turn this off because that communicates back to Microsoft, this computer. And it's just a case of, for the government at least, they don't want this issue being known mm. or whatever. So I don't know their reason, but that's my guess. Um, with, with this regards to the updates, uh, you might want to clear your Windows update history and cache because I've run into this sort of problem before where an update won't install. So you clear out Windows knowledge of what, not the updates themselves, but it's knowledge of what was updated. And then it goes there and has to check everything again, which is a long and painful process, but it rebuilds its index of what's been applied and what hasn't, which could be your problem. I do have a knowledge-based solution for this one. Oh, okay, go ahead. This is on Microsoft's knowledge base, um, and it is under, how do I reset Windows Update Components? 
This is probably what I was just talking about. Yeah, this is a uh, knowledge base article. 971058. That's 971058. Microsoft knowledge base sometimes really does come in handy. In this case, I would try to describe all the steps you need to do. But it's long. We would be here for another hour. However, this, so this may be the solution you need. What it will do is pretty much clean out, it'll, it'll reset Windows Update. So that this is, this is in fact exactly what I was talking about. I've done this on work machines that would not communicate with Windows Update properly to get them to work again. Probably what happened when you did the repair install. And what a repair install is, is instead of wiping the computer and, and putting a fresh install on, you, and this is something Windows 7 did, Windows 8, Windows 10 have different ways of doing it, but with Windows 7, what you would just do is install Windows 7 on top of Windows 7. Kind of. And yeah. it would work. You could keep all your programs. You wouldn't have to reinstall and everything. But it was a junky process. And it would be... Yeah, and, and if, 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 if Windows components had updated, it seemed, this is from my point of view, it seemed very hit or miss as to what it would fix and what it would go, no, this piece I want to overwrite is newer than the one I want to overwrite it with. I'm not going to replace that. It would do that. Sometimes it'd go. Other times it'd go, no, nope, this is getting replaced. So you couldn't tell. It's it, it's a hit and miss. It works, but it, that's why Windows 8 and Windows 10 have a newer process than the repair install because the repair install was always kind of hit and miss. So again, this is knowledge base 971058. Go to support.microsoft.com knowledge base 971058. And this will hopefully solve your Windows update problem. And just next time you have to do a repair like this, I would, at least with Windows 7, I know it's a pain in the ass, but I would honestly recommend wiping and starting over. Yes, yeah. I know you'll have to reinstall everything and set everything back up, but you won't run into problems like this. Okay, next question. Which one do we want to do? Uh, okay, this is a weird one. This one comes to us from Karen. Karen writes... Good evening, gents. I have a crummy keyboard cell phone, LG Expression, because it's the best I can get without a data plan. Okay. I refuse to play, pay for data when I'm already paying 68 a month for Comcast Internet at home. My workplace has internet. Wish I had an Android phone that works on Wi-Fi like my Android tablet and can without paying for data, but it seems that just isn't possible. Or is it? I know the issue isn't because of cellular, is because of cellular providers, but is there a way around it? Well... Yes, okay. dot, dot, dot. See, I know my, 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 my Samsung Note uh, 3, mm -hmm. I can tell it to use my Wi-Fi at home, uh -huh. and it won't chew up my data plan, but I don't think I have the option to not get a data plan. From a cellular Verizon. proprietor, yeah. All I right. a tiny data plan, but... There, Eric, Karen, the short answer is no. Pretty much every cell phone provider out there tax on some form of a data plan. Whether it's a tiny one or, or a large one, it is kind of, if you have a smartphone, they're gonna tack on a data plan. It's kind of what they do. Um, depending on which ones you go to, you can get better deals on it. Google Fi, which I might recommend, if you would get yourself, you, now it's only restricted to two models of phone right now. The, Andro, uh, the Nexus 6P, and the Nexus 5X. Android Fi is a little bit different. Not only does it do a uh, more extensive voice over IP and share across a couple other networks, it tends to be cheaper. You pay much less for it in, in the long run. That's your best option. Or maybe T-Mobile if you wanna for their prepaid options if you're not gonna use the data all that much. Now, if you wanna go to crazy town, here's an idea. I'm not expressly recommending this. This is just an answer. You could buy, say, for example, a Nexus. You can buy it right outright, $350. It's not cheap, but you could buy an Android Nexus. You could then 
not get a cell phone provider. What you could do instead is put your cell phone through, say, Skype or some other voice over IP service. That will function as your telephone. That'll work over Wi-Fi. You won't have a cellular connection, but you will have phone options. Now, this is a crazy pants option. I would never actively recommend it. I'm just saying it is, in fact, possible. So I have a question. Yeah. What would be the problem with buying an unlocked cell phone and just taking the SIM chip out of her old phone and putting it in a new one? Well, even if she takes the SIM chip out, it's still, you know, it's going to want a phone number. It's going to want but is, to isn't that on the SIM? Well, it's got, yeah, it's got her contacts and everything, and, but the SIM wouldn't transfer her phone number over to Skype. But see, no, no, not, ignore Skype. Okay. What, what is the technical, because I don't know this. This is okay. my, not my field. She has her old phone. Right. She takes the SIM out. Right. Which has her phone number and everything else on it. Yeah. It's how it, she puts it in an, another phone. She could use that other phone. Right. But so it's still bought, going to have a data plan. Not if you buy an unlocked phone off of, say, Amazon. But then how are you going to use the phone? Isn't moving the SIM card over enough? No. Okay. Because even yeah. if you, even if you just move the, the the fact of being on the network, it's going to want a data plan. Well, I'm not going to drop $300 on, a, on an unlocked phone to <clears throat> experiment with yeah. this. So I'll take your word for it. And also Obsidian brings up a good point. A lot of newer phones use teeny tiny s SIM cards now. Ah. They use those micro SIMs. There's, there's the SIM card, the mini SIM, and the micro SIM. It's redonkulous. But yeah, it's... And also, Lambo brings up a point. Depends on if the SIM is locked the original phone or not. Our, the best answer here, Karen, is you can do it, but it would be nuts. <laughs> Your best option is just get the the data plan with the least data on it, and whenever you are near us, don't don't do anything on your phone with data wise when you're not connected to a Wi-Fi network. And I think you can even many phones have an option saying don't use data when I'm not on Wi-Fi. Yes, you can tell it shut off the data. So you'll have a data plan like get like a one gig data plan. I think is the smallest you can get. But that's the best you're going to You're stuck. I'm sorry. You're, you're absolutely stuck. My bad. Um, all right. Let's see. We've got enough time. we got time for a couple more. All right. Here's a quick one from Jackson. Hi, Nash and Mike. I use my Windows 7 computer to play Blu-rays, but the software I use, ArcSoft Total Media Theater 6, no longer support it. So when a new Blu-rays I buy, I am unable to play. I was hoping you'd recommend any software for playing Blu-rays that won't foreseeably go down of date anytime soon. Actually, um, I did some research on this and I found a new option. What's that one? It is called, don't laugh. This is a um, sort of, it, it's completely free. It's in development. Uh... But my God, and you can tell this is not, you know, like a big corporate um, designed one. Just from the name, I'm going to put it up on screen here. Okay. You know what? I appreciate that people love making all sorts of new shit, but guys, come on. This is not really instilling a lot of confidence. Pot Player. Ha <laughs> It's called Pot Player. I've seen it recommended in a few places. It will play Blu-rays along with a whole bunch of other different video uh, formats. <laughs> it works. It's still being developed. It's it's people looking after it uh, directly. It's got a 64-bit version. It's not as complicated as getting, uh, say, VLC set up to run uh, Blu-rays. It just I, works. I, I never had any luck with that. This is, it's a no frills, easy, does, done and does and done option. And I'll give you a picture here of what it looks like. Um, however, it is called Pot Player. Guys, you're not in, are you in fucking high school? Is that where you're coming up with these fucking names for shit? 
I mean, damn. Why did you call it pot flare? Why? In any event, yes, pot play. I hate having to say it out loud. Pot player will play Blu-rays. It's got some fairly decent reviews looking around the uh, the internet. Um, and it's absolutely free. So if you need a Blu-ray player, it will work with, with Windows 7, 8, and 10. If you need a Blu-ray player for Windows 7, pot player. God damn it. You make I sound like a fucking idiot. Not that I don't normally sound like a fucking idiot. I just sound more like a fucking idiot. What I'm telling people... Pot player. But yes, that will solve your problem there. Um, uh, there's there's other options out there. There's apparently one called uh, AC Soft. Yeah. Blu-ray player. I'm just looking out here. I forget what the one that came with when I built this computer yeah. and, and bought a new DVD player for it. Um, it. It was one of the standards and I didn't like it, so I uninstalled it. All I know is Pot Player is I saw some good reviews from it from some trusted sites and it's completely free. Is it open source? I think. I believe so. They, 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 that, that's the best I can tell you. But it's in development. It is the simple solution. I like going with the quick, simple fucking solution. Do you want to play Blu-rays? Boom. Pot player. Boom. Sound like a fucking idiot. All right. This last one. Uh, do we have time for all this? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to give you a quick and easy answer for this one. Um, okay. This is from Tuma. I think that's how we say it. It's got a, an O, an umlaut. Is that an umlaut? I don't know if that's an umlaut. That's a bar. Umlaut it's is bar. two dots. Okay, it's a bar. Toma. I, I'm going to go with Toma. Or Tuma. Tumor. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm mangling your name. I'm awful. I'm sorry. Um. Dear Nash and Mike, the evil sadist. And I'd like to note here real quick. I, I'm, I'm glad to see there's some educated people in the world out there who know the difference between a sadist and a masochist. I, I appreciate that difference. I was wondering if you guys do anything about data encryption. I often have to lend out my laptop for things like streaming video and playing movies to my friends and family. However, I have some personal files and stuff for school. I'd rather no one else be able to access without my permission. Porn! <coughs> I wasn't going to... I was totally going to say that. Um... So, the files are all stored on a formatted M.2 SSD on my motherboard. Porn! Oh, sorry. Just keeps coming out. Uh, separate from the one containing the OS. It can be pass password protection or anything else. I just want something to help keep the hard drive out of sight and out of mind until I want to see it. Porn! Um, the easy, wow. The easy way here. I need a lozenge not, or something. Oh, man. If you're, if you're running Windows and it's not a Windows Home version, if you're running, I think, 7, 8, 10, professional, mm -hmm. um, I'd say turn on BitLocker. BitLocker is an option, but it's it's kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah, it can be. There is a simpler one, and it is open source, and it's free. Now, I'm going to warn you ahead of time. This is not going to keep the NSA out of your computer or out of your special secret files. Um, but... You look the casual person from looking at your stuff. Right. It's going to likely keep the guy who's repairing your computer. It's going to keep grandma. It's going to keep, you know, your four-year-old out of whatever you don't want them fucking around with. It's called, uh, it's a it's a free program called TrueCrypt. And there is, now again, this would take a very long time to go into on, on the stream. I'm going to uh, refer you to a site called How to Geek. Um, that's HowToGeek.com. Um, they have a guide on there to hiding your data in a TrueCrypt hidden volume. Now, this will do exactly what you were asking to do. Okay, so one thing I'd like to note, though, before Nash goes too much further on TrueCrypt. TrueCrypt stopped being supported in 2014. Mm hmm So, um, the people who were behind it, who... We don't know who they were. Right. They were anonymous doing encryption here. They basically came out and said, um, yeah, we're not supporting it anymore. If you know, we, I think they said something like, if you know what we knew, you wouldn't use it anymore, but I'm not sure. Hmm. Again, it'll keep the casual user out, won't keep the NSA out. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing uh, Obsidian's mentioning Veracrypt. Well, yeah, Veracrypt is, is an option. Um, I and I think it's just about as user-friendly. Yeah. 
Veracrypt, let's see, hidden vault. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, th there, there are guides to this. What you want to do is, whichever one you want to go with, either True Crypt or Veracrypt, um, what you want to do is get that software and set up a hidden volume on your... on. Now, what this does is it doesn't, you know, make everything super secure, but what it will do is encrypt the data that's on that hidden volume and require a password for you to actually access it. You have to access it through, you know, the, the, the password. Um, again, I'm not going to say this is the ultra super secret. Ooh, keep every, keep nasty things out. But if you're trying to keep casual people from looking into your stuff, it's, it's a good option. It's, it's, you know, you know, um, I'm not going to rate it for security because that's not my area of expertise. I can tell yeah. you, I can tell you when shit isn't secure, but I can't tell you how good some security is. Now, without a lot more research on my end. And, and so I'm looking up, and, and actually, I, I was incorrect. Uh, uh, it was, uh, they, there was an announcement saying, yes, TrueCrypt is safe to use, but they recommended moving to something else. Yeah. There's a few forks, which are, you know, splits off. Uh, Veracrypt is one of them. So Veracrypt is actually a fork of TrueCrypt. So okay. that one's still supported. Uh, and so because it's a fork, I would say that one, because it's still supported, if they, if they discover a bug, you know, and also I would consider just because of the nature of encryption, uh, having a secure backup of that data somewhere as well, because if you forget your password, you're data not bye bye. It. Data bye-bye. Data bye-bye. If something screws up during the encryption process, data bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. So yeah. So yeah, what, what you want to do is get Veracrypt. Um, go through, they, they have a guide, they even have a, a guide on their site on how to uh, do a hidden volume. That's what you want. Hidden volume, set a password, you're already okay, you'll keep the casual people from messing around in your system and you should be all set. Now, the, the reason I don't go with BitLocker is I've tried BitLocker, but it, it, there are ways around it, especially regarding... Um, user uh, administrator levels if if you have and pretty much i set my account to administrator all the time it, it's i yeah th this is that i would go with veracrypt now the uh, another question another option is you know oh excuse me yes except, except you're on an external drive so you really can't do that effectively if you had not a secondary drive is if all your stuff was under your user directory then you just create user accounts for those other people but yeah. really you can't really do that sort of redirection, uh, I think, mm. that easily with Windows like you could with Unix. Yeah. So, yeah. That, th there you go. Again, it's not, this is not to keep the NSA the fuck out, but it will keep Grandma from seeing boobies. Yeah. All right, everybody. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us. That's going to do it for us for this week. Uh, like I said, if you have any questions for next time, we'll be back in two weeks. Send those to requests at radiodeadair.com. Put tech Q&A in the subject line. We'll try and see if we can help you out. In the meanwhile, Mike and myself, good night, everyone. Good night.